They're responsible for the fastest growing area of crime. They targeted half the British population last year. They really came after me. I lost in a region of about 80,000 pounds. We're in. But they are very hard to catch. There's no one at home, no one at home. A scam artist knows that there's a sucker born every day. He's just got to find him. Meet the foreign scam artists who are hitting Britain. 50 euro, 50 pounds. I don't have any cash on me. No money, no money, mister. It's scam after scam after scam. From the street scammers of Eastern Europe to the West African scammers targeting us online. How do I get this money to you? Thank you, bank transfer. Brilliant. We follow the police as they tackle a crime wave. The scammers have got bottle. But I joined this job to catch the baddies. Do, do you have the checks? And for the first time, we meet the secret citizen army that's fighting back. She's got a fake check. They'll prey on anybody. You're a thief. And that's where we come in. No way! You came well, what are you coming in there for? Well, you coming for the view, have you? The lads in the cab. Lads in the cab. These are the. Uh, Albanian people. How you doing? In 10 minutes, I'm going to have loads of policemen here. So today, you're going to get a warning. Get you guys off the bridge. Yeah? Move them along. London, summer 2013. Amongst the tourists are the foreign gangs of scam artists. In just 12 months, they helped contribute to a 21% rise in the number of fraud offences reported in the UK. Yeah. Police, go away. Sergeant Birmingham is tasked with catching them. All these people have paid good money to be here, haven't they? And they want a sort of really good trip here and really peaceful. Um, we're not a third world country. It's the greatest country in the world, isn't it? The capital has fallen victim to an influx of Eastern European scam artists carrying out one of the oldest known frauds. It may date back thousands of years, but today it's plaguing the streets of London. Only the ball, show me the ball, live, right? 50 euro, 50 pounds. I don't have any cash on me. No money, no money, mister. They make it look easy, but there's more going on than meets the eye. They are incredibly, incredibly um, switched on. Um, they work as a team. The man running the mat, he's the expert. He's the guy that makes the gang the money. Behind him, he's got minders and he's got someone which will hold his money. If it's looking quiet and they're trying to entice someone in there, one of that gang will then come around and he will pose as a person playing the game. He will then be allowed to win. So he's then standing there with this big wad of money. Um, the tourist comes up and thinks, if he's winning, I'm going to win. This is what happens when a real punter joins the game. Keep your eye on the ball. Easy. It's the middle one, right? Wrong. Now, watch again. The ball is clearly seen under the middle box. A subtle nudge here, and the ball is palmed into the scammer's right hand, allowing him to slip it under this box. Bang, before they know it, they've taken, we've had four or five, six hundred dollars taken off an American on the bridge. Darren Birmingham is planning to hit the gangs hard with a police raid, just as they introduce a new, more devious scam to the streets. It's called the Bogus Cop. Your bogus policemen, they are the next step up. They are nasty, sinister, spiteful people. This CCTV footage captures the scam in action. A pair of foreign tourists are approached by this man, the Stooge. The Stooge subtly signals to his colleagues that he's found some victims. Enter two fake plainclothes cops. They convince the couple to hand over their IDs for inspection and, crucially, their bank cards as well. While one bogus cop distracts them, the other pockets a credit card. They then apologise for wasting the couple's time and beat a hasty retreat. Your bogus police officer, there's no morals or there's no integrity in what they do at all. A glimpse of the warrant card. And it's like, oh gosh, rabbit in the headlights. Why are they allowed on the streets of London? Oh, oh, I don't know. Why are they allowed in our, in our country? Oh, I really don't know. This time the couple do spot what has just happened. Thanks to the CCTV evidence, the three-man gang from Romania was arrested and each scammer received a 16-month prison sentence. 
As you're well aware, we currently have a large increase in activity involving Romanian Eastern European gangs in the Westminster Bridge, stretching right across London into the West End. For Darren, enough is enough. Today he's planning a major operation to try and clear the bridge of its scam artists once and for all. Our intention, we're going to deter, identify, prosecute and apprehend offenders. Let's show that the Metropolitan Police has some teeth. Two o'clock, bang on the plot. Let's be right up for it, OK? But catching the scammers is easier said than done. They have travelled throughout Europe and they, they make their money by deception. They are good, good, unscrupulous criminals. The international scammer gangs move with the times. And they have a new weapon of choice. One that has defrauded over a quarter of a million Brits in the past 12 months. The email scam, basically, you're hitting a vast amount of numbers of people very quickly. You can then figure out your five to ten victims. Email scams take many forms. From the extraordinary financial rewards offered in return for a small upfront fee, to the dating scams where an online Romeo targets your cash. Mary was one victim. All in all, over ten months I lost in the region of about £80,000. Mary met Richie, who claimed to be a businessman in Ghana, and she fell in love. We felt happy, contented with each other's company online. We just sort of clicked and everything fell into place. Then he started asking for some money. The hooks that dragged me in were the fact, I mean, I just believed that it was all true. She paid £80,000 in four instalments. But Richie vanished almost as quickly as he appeared. When it was all over, I'd realised what had happened. I was just leave, left feeling totally embarrassed. I just didn't want to tell anybody, I didn't speak to anybody. I just wanted to crawl into a hole and die. The British police are almost powerless to prevent the email scammers, as a large proportion of them emanate from Africa. For them, the risk is very minimal, because in their eyes, they just think either it's one of those crimes that won't be looked into, or they can just simply shut up the laptop and walk away with whatever amounts of money they've made to date. But a determined group of citizens is fighting back. Uh, as soon as you confirm that you have the money, you just call me. OK, sir, well, listen, I'm going to call you on Wednesday the 15th because the money will be in my account on that day. Ray is a former civil servant turned scam baiter. Scam baiting involves taking on internet scammers. These are the individuals that send you email after email telling you that a relative you didn't know you had in Nigeria has died and left you millions. It's a lie. It's a con. I will have the money on Wednesday the 15th because this is a very important business deal. Some victims have been the most intelligent people in our society. Judges, lawyers, barristers, solicitors, accountants. Ray is part of a secret community trying to help the police by disrupting the plans of the scammers and gathering incriminating evidence that could lead to a prosecution. As scam baiters, we can't prosecute them. But we do help to have them brought before the courts. Mr. Lee, it's, Mr. it's Mr. Pricky. How are you, sir? Ray has spent months posing as a potential victim of an email fraud, talking directly to a group of scammers in West Africa. I want to thank you for your email. It was very kind of you to think of me. The man on the phone thinks Ray is called Pricky Sterling. I told you, Pricky. Pricky, you know, um, um, I'm a very straightforward um, individual. Yes, sir, I've got you. Thank you very much for clarifying. Ray has been offered 10 kilos of gold worth £5 million for a remarkably modest upfront investment of £30,000. So, you are serious to move. We're only waiting for the time. I was bullied when I was a young boy, and I had years of looking over my shoulder. And internet scammers are bullies. They're aggressive, they're thieves, and they prey on innocent people. Ray's told them that he has the £30,000, but he's only going to hand it over if they come to Cornwall to meet him. This is absolutely stunning. Look at that. Ray's plan is to disrupt the scammers' operations by wasting their time and money. 
They never want anyone to travel. It's hassle, it's logistics, and they know that if it doesn't work out, they've lost a lot of money and time. If the scammers take the bait, they'll have to spend valuable resources travelling thousands of miles to this abandoned chapel in Cornwall. What a lovely day for it. Up. Coming up, the police hit the street scammers. Where are you from? Romania. Godfrey says he's outside the station. And in Cornwall, an online scam comes to a head. The lad's in the cab. Lad's in the cab. Summer 2013, and Britain is facing a crime wave of fraud. In London, beneath the tourists' gaze, the police have launched a major strike against a gang of street scammers. Matthew, right? On the south side of Westminster Bridge, Sergeant Darren Birmingham is leading a rapid stop search operation. Hands up. Stop search is it's a great tool. You're telling them, you know, we're here every day because people like you, because we know you and you're always here, you're here to commit a crime and you're scamming people and you're making life difficult for people and that's not acceptable. Well, you usually speak English. Little. Little. Please speak English because it saves time. My name's Sergeant Birmingham. This man is known to the police for a number of previous gambling offences. Unfortunately, we get crime. It involves a lot of Eastern Europeans involved in theft offences. For that reason, you've been seen loitering around here for some time. I'm going to search you. Do you understand? No, I understand. OK. Well, I'm going to search you. Hands away. You understood that? Thank you very much. On the west side of the bridge, plainclothes officers have spotted a game in progress and prepare to strike. I've seen these guys playing chase the lady on the bridge. I've seen the, the mat and the uh, matchboxes and a sponge ball. This guy is in control of the game, as we call it. He's the main operator. And the gentleman with the cap we've stopped there is one of the uh, goaders that sort of entice members of the public to play by handing over money and winning the game. And when the, the real tourists play, they always lose because they hide the ball. So we look, finish your cigarette before you get in the van, yeah? Uh, no crime. But you didn't smoke? No, no, problem. no, no, no smoke. No Thank you. It's no good for you. Ah. You'll never be able to run away from me. They're not only criminals in our system, they're also really well known in their own country. They come here because of the heat's on them wherever they are. They're probably known in Barcelona, they're known in Nice, Paris, wherever the, that, that gang is operating, they do get arrested. We do not accept crime in this area. We do not accept crime one little bit. So you're going to be going home, do you understand me? Yes, you, you, that's, that's correct, yes. The bridge has been cleared. Around a dozen known criminals were moved on, and the operation led to two arrests. There won't be any crime here this afternoon. Then we'll do what policemen should be doing, harassing criminals. That's what it's about. I think I'm going to put it there. They will see it, and they'll go through this kissing gate and avoid this place. In Cornwall, former civil servant Ray is hoping to disrupt the activities of his own gang of scammers by tying up their money and resources. This is a gold scammer. He's bringing a small five-gram sample of gold for me to assay. He's agreed to do a deal with a group of scam artists. They're offering him £5 million of gold for an upfront fee of £30,000. Ray's only condition... They have to meet him at this remote chapel in Cornwall. If Ray's plan works, the scammers based in Ghana will have to pay for an associate to travel all the way from London to Rain Head to meet him. Oh, Godfrey, how are you? I'm good, I'm good. I'm at Paddington now. I'll be at the ice of at 5.21. 5.21. It seems that the scammers have taken the bait and are sending a man called Godfrey to pick up the cash. What are you wearing, uh, Godfrey? Yeah, the blazer. Grey blazer. The operation is on. <laughs> At Plymouth Station, a fellow scam baiter is waiting as lookout. I'm not normally the excitable type, but I, I would say the tension's mounting with this, and I am looking forward to it. Chris, a former publican, helps the police identify scam artists by tracking down their personal details online. What motivates me is the fact that everyone uses the internet. My mum uses it, she's 65, and she uses it. All my family, friends, I don't want to see them get scammed. 
We're now past the time that the train is due in, so he's, he's around somewhere. And here is Godfrey, the scam artist's representative. The lad has landed. The lad has landed. Yes, who's speaking, please? Hello, who is it? The lad's in the cab. Lad's in the cab. Right in front of us is Rain Head. Out there on the headland, you can see a little dot. That is the chapel. That is where we are going. Rain Head's a bastard to get to. There's no other way to say it. It is a bastard to get to. Godfrey steps out at Ramehead car park. He's ready to offer five million in gold for an upfront cash payment of thirty thousand pounds. When he gets out of the taxi, I'm immediately calculating how much he's spent so far, and I can add that to his rail fare. So I'm totting up the money. Ray is pretending to be a local rambler to encourage Godfrey to walk up to the chapel. Yeah, there's a sign on the gate there. That's the chapel. I'm going up there myself now. Walk it, I'll take him. That's the chapel, yeah. Yeah, beautiful view. Fantastic. Godfrey's getting nervous. He's a long way from home and there's no sign of his contact, Pricky Sterling, or his money. Come on, come on, come on, come on. Godfrey notices our camera. When it follows him, he realises he's being watched. Ray and Chris close in. Just coming up to the car park. And prepare to confront the man calling himself Godfrey face to face. You're a scammer. No. Yes, you are. You're a guy man. Godfrey, we know all about you. Guy man means scam artist in scammer slang. You're a guy man. I'm not a guy man. You're a guy man. You're an advanced speed fraud. I'm not a guy man. You are. You're a guy man. I'm not a guy man. Why did you come here today? I'm not a guy man. Why have you come here? Why have I come here? Yeah. I'm here to see a uh, 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 freaky. You, yeah, that's me. I'm freaky. So, so what do you want to see me for? I'm here. It seems Godfrey's forgotten why he's here. I don't get it, man. You do? No. You're a 419 artist. I'm not 419, man. You are 419. 419 is an article in Nigerian law for fraud offences. Sorry, I'm not 419. You are 419. No. You're a guy, man. No way. I, I would say I lost my temper a little bit more than I should have done. You're a 419 scammer. You're a dirty fucking thief. Myself? Yes. I got into that alpha mode that I did, but I did lose my temper with him. How can you prove that? How can I prove it? We got the emails. Well, you come in for the view, I'm have you? Scammer. Talk to my... Have you come in for the view, have you? Why? Where are you going? Scammer. It's all right, mate. You can, let me, go. You can let me go. Let me go. Godfrey never admitted he was a scam artist. Despite repeated attempts to contact him, he never did explain why he went to Rame Head, or why he was offering £5 million worth of gold for £30,000 in cash. I'm a bit disappointed at myself, to tell the truth. I've, <laughs> I, I lost my temper a bit, and, you know, I shouldn't have done. I mean, we have to stay within the law. We, we, you know, we have to be the good guys. There's no point in doing it if we're going to be the bad guys. I am... I am a bit disappointed with myself, but then it's done. What's done's done. From fake emails to bogus uniforms, the scam artist will use every possible tool to get at your cash. In North London, a police unit are trying to crack down on a fraud that involves a simple telephone call. So successful, it's one of Britain's fastest growing scams. Did you get some milk? This is, yeah. this is what really goes on in the CID office. Have you yeah. got the milk? <laughs> Let's have a cup of tea. Say, that's all I want. There's a saying in the police, if offered a cup of tea or a chance to have a pee, always take it, because you never know when you're going to have another one. DS Shaw and a colleague are on the hunt for gangs operating a new type of phone scam that has cost Britain's two and a half million pounds in just two years. So. Ah, th yeah, this is the one where he's uh, got fingerprints on two victims, a piece of paper found from two victims. One in. North it's called courier fraud. And the conman who use it caught out more than 3,000 victims since 2011. It's true to say that many conmen are quite charismatic, uh, and that's how that's the tool that they use. However, with courier fraud, I think it's it's quite a bit different. The victims that they're targeting, they're deliberately doing it, are vulnerable. In his 90s. Oh. When you're picking on some of the most vulnerable people in the community and people who've actually worked to get the money that they've got and they're having that money taken off them by people who've never worked and whose families have never worked. That really is a bit low. It does make you angry. This is how the fraud works. 
One phone call and a courteous voice is all you need for this sneaky little scam. The scammer calls his victim, telling them he's from the bank and there is a problem with their card. He asks the victim to urgently call the fraud line number on the back. And here's the sneaky bit. The victim hangs up the phone. He then calls back to the bank. But the scammer has never even hung up his end of the line. The fraudster, pretending to be from the bank, now asks the victim to confirm their card number and PIN. Now the scammer just needs the credit card itself. The victim is told that a courier will come and collect his compromised card and that a replacement card will be sent to him. But the credit card is actually delivered to the scammer. Andy Welsh was just one victim. They made me call the number on the back of my bank card and it didn't get through to the bank. From then on in, I was in a world of trouble. That then led on down the road to giving over much more information and, crucially, all my money. Once the fraudsters had Andy's card and PIN, they emptied his account to five and a half thousand pounds. It's like somebody who would stab you and smile at you at the same time, which I think takes an extra level of, um, kind of malice. In North London, Detective Sergeant Shaw has a courier fraud scammer in his sights. The police! He's hoping to surprise a member of a gang who have made thousands of pounds out of their victims in the past year. Here, two courier fraudsters are on a spending spree in a department store using a victim's credit card. They've bought as many designer clothes as they can carry. The receipt is a full five feet long, and in total they've spent £7,000. Many of these nominals fall into the category of gold chains and no brains. They've got loads of bling. They've made loads and loads of money. I mean, pots of money. How do you do, Mrs. Ruth? We've come for Osama. Now, your husband, when I was here last time, promised me faithfully he'd get him to give himself up. I know. Okay. It's not the first time D.S. Shaw's paid a visit to this address. He now, I keep coming here and I keep getting told that he's not here. So where is he? He is not here because I did told him off before when I was not happy when I heard everything. Mother said to me, he's a good boy, he doesn't steal from me. Well, my argument to that is, well, the Craze were good to their mum as well, weren't they? When did you last see him? The before the day you came. You Even haven't, you haven't seen him since we last no, came? No, I haven't seen him. Believe me, I have no reason to see him. And Sam is definitely not here? No. Are we OK to go and have a look for him? No, he's not there. No points of going. I'm telling you. No point. No. You'll, you'll pardon me if I don't take your word for it. Can we go and have a look? So Thank you. Morning, sir. How are you? Right. Looking for your son, as per usual. Well, it's not my right. okay. He's not here. You did promise us that you were going to bring him to us. Yeah, but he's not back yet, sir. We're just going to check the wardrobes, yeah? Yeah, yeah. Definitely not in here. No. <laughs> I'm going to jump out at me and say boo. <laughs> when he will come, he will go fasting to you. Believe me. I have heard that before. Yeah. I don't like making it difficult for you, you don't need but to I have come. to. You don't need I, I do to need to come. I will send him. He so you comes. say, but you haven't done it. That's why I need to keep coming. I do think that's possible. Used him. I'm okay. You, you All right. He, he, he's a victim. Some children, yeah. Okay. His, his children used him. Thank you very much. She's a mother, isn't she? And she's going to look after her, her son. Uh, but I think I know when I'm being lied to, and I don't believe that she hasn't been in touch with her son for six weeks. Just don't believe that. And I'm hoping that she will get the message to him, because we're not going to stop. Usama's mum never did hand in her boy, but he was eventually arrested a month later and received an 18-month prison sentence for fraud. Coming up, a new scam hits the capital's ticket machines. The scams that people are doing on the ticket machines are the top end of the scam in hierarchy. And Ray and Chris plan their most audacious operation yet. Trafalgar Square was a real challenge. What do you mean, no? She's got a fake check. Across Britain, an estimated three and a half billion pounds is lost to fraud every year. And the scams come in all shapes and sizes. I'll let you know how we get on. All right. In North London, the police are dealing with an outbreak of courier fraud. We're going up to West End Lane area where we think, or we're hoping, a man by the name of <laughs> maybe, to arrest him for a career fraud. The Shaw is on his way to the address of a man who has £7,500 in his bank account. 
linked to the victim of a courier fraud. Some of these people are, are incredibly arrogant. They'll sometimes phone up after having taken the money, crow about it, boast about it, ridicule the victim or abuse them verbally. This time, someone's in. You're going to be getting arrested today on conspiracy to commit fraud. Do you understand what the officer said to you? You don't understand. Is that because you don't understand English or you don't know what you're saying? No English. You don't speak English? No. Is that right? You were dealt with before by my colleague. I thought he said you spoke English then. No. Well, you understood what I just said? No, yes, sir. Okay. Is that your wife? Yeah. Yeah. Does she speak English? Yeah. Well, you understood all that? No, it's a little bit, sir. No, oh, yeah. Okay. It's getting better all the time. A rapid search of the flat produces some bank statements. It's a lot of money going into your bank account. 7,982. Where's that money coming from? It's benefit money. Benefit money? What? 8,000 pounds benefit money? In fact, the man received the money from a relative, who was later convicted of courier fraud. The man always maintained that funds were paid into his account without his knowledge. The police recovered the remaining money, and he was not tried for any offence. You need to move on to the next one. There's still five a day. There's still people doing it. Scambaters like Chris can't arrest the fraudsters, but they can frustrate them by wasting their time and money. There are many methods to hook scammers in. The most popular one is to act like a genuine victim. If he thinks you're going to pay, he will keep talking to you, and he will eventually you can get him to jump through hoops. These pictures posted on the Scam Beta website, 419 Eater, show the lengths scam artists have been persuaded to go on the promise of a deal, which may make them think twice about targeting victims in the future. A blonde wig. And also, you know, he's half naked. What did you say to him in that email to get him to do that? Here is the entire cast of The Wizard of Oz. At least Dorothy's given it a good go. This fraud gang agreed to recreate an entire dance routine by the village people. It's fun to stay out the YMCA. It's fun to stay out the YMCA. That's how desperate a lad is to get all of your money, you know? At the end of the day, he'll do anything to steal off you. Chris is now determined to take scam baiting to a new level. Hello, LJ. He's planning to set a trap for a scam artist in the heart of London and gather incriminating evidence to pass on to the police. To pull it off, he's recruited a fellow scam baiter. You're going to be very, very lucky and you're going to play my wife. Joy. Yes. Meet Jill. I do an awful lot of baiting. I've wound up an awful lot of lads. Getting a, a death threat is a bit of a trophy, but I wouldn't want to combine getting a death threat with somebody knowing exactly who I was and where to find me. Jill may be nervous, but she agrees to join Chris on the operation. Knocking a lad's confidence is one of the key things that we do as baiters. It means that they're less confident in their next victim. It means they're not as good a scammer for their next victim. And that's what we want. We want them to be rubbish scammers, so that they're not trusted, so that people don't send them money. For the UK, London is the front line of the unseen war between the scammers and those trying to stop them. At an East London tube station, Mark Pink and Graham Hempstead of the British Transport Police are on lookout. Oh well, got me out of bed. <laughs> Waiting. For someone, there's nothing, you can't beat it. There's, that, there's a buzz inside of you that think, as soon as he turns up, he's ours. Get up at quarter past four. I was up at quarter past four this morning. They're searching for a Romanian fraudster who's using a new type of scan at the capital's ticket machines. The scams that people are doing on the ticket machines are the top end of the scam in hierarchy. It's a device that copies bank cards when they're used to buy tickets. This scammer has affected hundreds and hundreds of people. He has taken their credit card details without their knowledge and obviously without their permission. This is the man they're after, caught on CCTV at another station, wearing a hoodie to obscure his face. This guy was pretty switched on. Um, at times he'd come into the station always with his hood up, even in the height of summer. He has a card reader device already in his hand. After checking he's not being watched, 
he slips it directly over the original. He then takes a small camera device and fixes it above the keyboard, ready to record pin numbers. The machine is now live to gather card details. 13 hours later and the scam artist is back, now in a different outfit. The reader has now amassed dozens of card details and he removes it with a simple tug. To avoid suspicion, he leaves it to this man, an accomplice, to remove the camera device using a specially adapted screwdriver. And this is how easily it's done. First the camera, then the skimmer. All in just 30 seconds. It can stay on offer up to 12 hours sometimes. So 12 hours of data at a busy station, you can imagine the amount of people that are going to use that ticket machine. Mark and Graham have had a tip-off that the scammer's girlfriend has been using this station. They hope she will lead them to him. We went and had a look at the CCTV. Where are you? But there's a hitch. There we go, look, that's exactly her. She's already passed through the barriers without being spotted. We know it's her. Oh, well, these things happen. Breakfast and office. Office, then breakfast. Yeah, yeah she came in at 7.40. Um, and we don't know where she's tapped out yet. For this elusive scammer, the hunt continues. You want to just stamp your feet and throw your toys out of the pram and kick the cat, but we know there'll be another day. Every dog has his day and uh, we were going to arrest this person sooner or later. It's 9am in Trafalgar Square and the climax of months of careful scam baiting. Posing as gullible victims are Ray, Jill and Chris. A group of scammers have offered them half a million pounds reward for a small upfront investment. Chris has asked them to bring signed cheques for the full amount. Trafalgar Square was a real challenge, something I don't think has ever been done in the world of scam baiting. The baiters are hoping to catch the scammers with incriminating evidence in the form of fake cheques for the huge sum of money they're promising. But it's not going to plan. Well, are you going to be here at 1.15 with the cheques or not? The scammers aren't yet taking the bait. So, can you make it for 2.30? What do you mean, no? Nobody's showed yet. There have been lots of cry-offs, lots of excuses and some delays. But they are notoriously unreliable. The baiters have been waiting for six hours. Finally, an associate of the scammers is on the line and says she's nearby. We're meeting in Trafalgar Square so we can uh, pay you some money and you'll give us some um, two cheques in return. We've just spoken with one and it's a woman, which is unusual. This is the woman Chris spoke to on the phone who confirmed she had two cheques for him. She seems wary and the scam baiters can't be sure she has the incriminating cheques. Coming up... Are you Mrs Milton? I'm Lynette. Lovely to The bait you. is taken. I've got the signal. And across London... Oh, you can see the pinhole camera. Mark Pink finally tracks down his man. You get an adrenaline rush. You start rounding the troops up. If he walked past, you just can have him. British consumers lose more money to online fraud than those of any other country. But one group of citizens is fighting back. In London, three scam baiters have persuaded a scammer gang to send an associate to meet them in the hope of gaining incriminating evidence. OK, okay just, just ring me when you get to Trafalgar Square and we'll, we'll hook up, OK? And here she is. Are you Mrs Milton? I'm Lynette. Lovely yeah. to meet you. Yeah. How was your trip? Fine. Yeah? Good. What, where did you come from? Ah, oh, right, OK. Mrs Milton is here on behalf of a Nigerian barrister who's offered Chris, online and on the phone, half a million pounds in return for an initial cash payment of just £13,000. Thank you for coming. Excellent. Right. We should do some business then, really, shouldn't we? We should, yeah. We're really, really excited by this, yeah? Really excited. I was waiting for a pre-arranged signal. As soon as 
Chris and Jill had seen the fake check or checks. Jill would take her handbag off her right shoulder and lower it down to the ground. Do you, do you have the checks? Yeah. Yeah? OK, excellent. I've got the signal. Ray wants her arrested. She's got a fake check. He rushes off to find a police officer while Chris plays for time. So, so you come from where, sorry? I'm uh, originally from France. You're originally from France? France Je parle un peu de la France. Uh, okay. uh, oui. What we do is we're volunteers and in a, what we do is we tie up internet scammers. Chris is keeping the lead scammer on the line while he waits for the police. Uh, I, I'm such a fool. Um, we're, we're a couple of, of um, pounds short, but um, I've just sent um, my, my secretary to the ATM machine, so she'll go and get that and we'll, uh, we'll sort that out. But Mrs Milton is off. She saw me and two policemen coming across the square and she went into the adjacent public toilets. Hey, officers, um, the lady's come down basically running a, a scam against us and she's carrying two forged checks and she's gone in the toilet, the chances are she may be flushing them. A few minutes later, and it's a very different Mrs Milton who emerges without wig or leather coat. She slips by unnoticed. Almost. Our producer is the first to catch up with her. We heard the conversation of you on the phone to Chris, mm -hmm. saying that you were coming to bring some checks in exchange for some money. Mm -hmm. Part of that, part of the scam. Do you not know? Do you not know about it? No. We managed to get the police involved. They're not convinced they can do anything. Is she guilty? She's got a wig in her bag. She's here on an alias. She's carrying two checks for two hundred and fifty thousand pounds each. Is she guilty? Was Lee Harvey Oswald guilty? A lot of people would say no, but he definitely bloody was. Chris may be convinced, but the quarter of a million pound checks aren't there. The woman who calls herself Janice Milton is let go without being charged. I received a call with a friend today, which he asked me to come here, down here, just to meet somebody and ask the person that if he has money with him. And if the person say yes, so I'm going to give him a call if he come down. Before she leaves, Mrs Milton has one last piece of advice. Be careful of scam, be careful. <laughs> At Epping Station, the Romanian ticket machine scammer is plying his trade once more. You can see where the skimmer bit is. And the camera's here, so the usual trip to them is drop into here. And here you see the pinhole camera, but that won't pick it up. We were learning that he might have gone back to Romania, and then suddenly he appears again. So we think, right, the hunt's back on. They so always do them on these smaller machines because there's no angle to put a camera device here. We know that device is on. He is going to come back for it. This could be the moment to nab his man. And Mark Pink calls for backup. You get an adrenaline rush. You start rounding the troops up. Like, let's get out to Epping. Two outside the station. If he walks past and he clocks us, we'll just nab him. We are now playing the waiting game. If he was caught, he would run simple as 20 yards is mine 21 yards is someone else's I'm guessing that there's going to be already quite a lot of compromised bank account numbers on that device today's news tomorrow's after a three hour wait the suspect finally appears. That moment when he arrived and walked past me and then he turned and looked at the front of the bus stop and I thought, that's him. Do you have to say anything for the main harm defence if you do not mention something which later on caught anything you do so may be given evidence. Do you understand me? Do you understand me? Good man. If you just pull that green bit off, give it a yank. 
The card reader is removed with the police having ensured no details ever got into the hands of the scammer. Put the card in there and this bit here will skim the device here. That will take all the card details off. Simple as that really. Simple little bit of kit. The job's a good one, isn't it? And it's All these months of tireless work looking through CCTV gaining evidence, going to places to wait for him, you can't beat it. When he's, you're looking at him in the face, he's a goner. That's it. Good lad. If you get into the car, stay this side, all right? It's a good result for the British Transport Police, and across the country, other scammers are being caught. From the street operators to those working online, We've got a search warrant to search for stolen property right. and articles in connection with credit card fraud, OK? The ones who are brash are having pause for thought now because we're seeing some big sentences dished out. But with many of the gangs working from beyond the clutches of British justice, where they can devise ever more devious frauds, we all remain vulnerable to that unsolicited offer. This is how they pay their bills. This is how they, they feed themselves. There's no morals or there's no integrity in what they do at all. They're going for the weak. What's next for me as a scam baiter? I'm going to continue what I've been doing for the past couple of years, and that's getting scammers to travel up to St Michael's Chapel.